To better understand sequence of returns and uncertainty, let's look at three scenarios. Case 1 is a lump sum investor with a $100,000 original investment that is bought and held untouched for 10 years. Case 2 is a periodic saver. This person makes a $10,000 deposit each year for 10 years. Case 3 is a spender or retiree with a $100,000 original investment at retirement. This person begins withdrawing 6% or $6,000 of their original capital at the end of the first year with 3.5% annual increases thereafter. For example, the second year withdrawal would be 6.21% and the third year 6.43%, etc. Now, let's look at four different hypothetical portfolios over a 10-year period. Portfolio A achieved these returns every year for 10 years so that the average rate of return for the portfolio over 10 years was 10%. Portfolio B achieved these annual rates of return. This portfolio also averaged 10% over the 10 years. Portfolio C averaged 10% over 10 years. Finally, Portfolio D averaged 8% over 10 years. Now, let's combine our investors. Remember the lump sum investor, periodic saver, and spender. With the portfolios we just saw and look at the results. Portfolio A achieved 10% each year. So for cases 1, 2, 3, these are your ending balances and you see the compounded rate of return indicated next to the ending balance. So for cases 1, 2, and 3 with Portfolio A, all cases compounded at 10%. For Portfolio B, the compounded rates of return are much different than the average rate of return. And for Portfolio C, the same differences occur between the average and compounded returns. The differences in compounding for Portfolios A, B, and C are a result of the actual sequence of annual return and not the 10-year averages. Now what do you notice about these sequences? Portfolio A has no variability in annual sequence. Portfolio B has negative returns early in the sequence, and Portfolio C has negative returns late in the sequence. In Portfolio D, let's focus on Case 3, comparing Portfolios B and D. It is possible to have an investment average 8% return and finish with a higher value than a 10% average return due to sequence of return and cash flow differences. This demonstrates that compounded rates of return are different than average rates of return and that cash flow behavior when combined with actual sequence of returns results in actual investor return which may differ from the actual investment average return.